This video presents part 9 of the fourth sacrament, penance. Question 81. What should he do who does not remember the exact number of his sins? Answer. He who does not distinctly remember the number of his sins, must mention the number, as nearly as he can. Question 82. Does he who through forgetfulness does not confess a mortal sin, or a necessary circumstance, make a good confession? Answer. He who through pure forgetfulness does not confess a mortal sin, or a necessary circumstance, makes a good confession, provided he has been duly diligent in trying to remember it. Question 83. If a mortal sin, forgotten in confession, is afterwards remembered, are we bound to confess it in another confession? Answer. If a mortal sin forgotten in confession is afterwards remembered, we are certainly bound to confess it the next time we go to confession. Question 84. What does he commit who, through a shame or some other motive, willfully conceals a mortal sin in confession? Answer. He who, through a shame or some other motive, willfully conceals a mortal sin in confession, profanes the sacrament, and is consequently guilty of a very great sacrilege. Question 85. In what way must he relieve his conscience who has willfully concealed a mortal sin in confession? Answer. He who has willfully concealed a mortal sin in confession, must reveal to his confessor the sin concealed, saying how many confessions he has concealed it, and make all these confessions over again, from the last good confession. Question 86. What reflection should a penitent make, who is tempted to conceal a sin in confession? Answer. He who is tempted to conceal a mortal sin in confession should reflect. 1. That he was not ashamed to sin, in the presence of God who sees all. 2. That it is better to manifest his sin secretly to the confessor, than to live tormented by sin, die an unhappy death, and be covered with shame before the whole world, on the day of general judgment. 3. That the confessor is bound by the seal of confession under the gravest sin, and under threat of the severest punishments, both temporal and eternal. Question 87. What is meant by saying that the accusation ought to be sincere? Answer. By saying that the accusation ought to be sincere, is meant that we must unfold our sins as they are, without excusing them, lessening them, or increasing them. Question 88. What is meant by saying that the confession ought to be prudent? Answer. That the confession ought to be prudent, means that in confessing our sins, we should use the most careful words possible, and be on our guard against revealing the sins of others. Question 89. What is meant by saying the confession ought to be short? Answer. That the confession ought to be short, means that we should say nothing that is useless for the purpose of confession. Question 90. Is it not a heavy burden to be obliged to confess one's sins to another, especially when these are shameful sins? Answer. Although it may be a heavy burden to confess one's sins to another, still it must be done, because it is of divine precept, and because pardon can be obtained in no other way, and, moreover, because the difficulty is compensated by many advantages and great consolations. This video concludes part 9 of the 4th sacrament. The next video will present part 10 of the 4th sacrament.